Welcome back to the European LCS where H2K are up 2-0 in the battle for third place in the summer split. We just saw how everyone here is enjoying themselves as well. Send out everything you want with the hashtag LCS and we will check all of that out. For now though, let's talk about the series so far. I saw a lot of similarities between game one and two. What about you guys? A lot of similarities, all that start in the lane swap, to be honest. Uh, it just is becoming evident that UOL find themselves unaware of what they should be doing in a lane swap at times. You know, they're slower to the punch than H2K, and when it comes to support positioning, jungle positioning, they're really leaving a lot to be desired. Definitely, the, like, the biggest issue is how the Unicorns of Love are playing out the lane swap. Because I like to think lane swap is like a scenario where, like a, like a game of pool. You hit the white ball and it hits another ball, and it's like action causes action. And with that in mind, there is no room for something that is, like, crazy. That's why in these scenarios, they, they seem very, very clueless in the lane swap scenario. And it doesn't really work out for them. And of course, H2K is getting far ahead every time. Yeah, and the cast has talked about it a lot. Starting on the, the stronger side and then ending up on the weaker mm. side, where uh, that was where eventually Lulex would go in to the enemy jungle, get that pick to start things off. It put them so far behind. Uh, the Shen support ended up getting level four right as Thresh got level six. It was a big, big difference. Uh, this was the, actually the invade to, that started the whole game off, started just a chain of events and put unicorns on the back foot, which they would try and recover from, but. Ultimately, H2K are just accruing too much of a lead in the early game for the Unicorns to come back. Yeah. And we have to mention it once again, the Elise uh, and Runeglaive junglers in general were the big question marks for Lulex, but he said, game two here, when it matters, I'm going to do it. And that is something to be proud of for him. Yeah, for sure, for sure. He has shown us that he has kept the Elise in his pocket for a long time. But one thing that is quite worrying for that me... That tickle spider in your pocket. <laughs> come on. Yeah. Now, now I feel all weird. <laughs> no, but to be honest, like the core key first rotation, it kind of highlights how scared they are of HK taking a first rotation on red side. And first picking core key just because you're scared kind of shows the fact that you have nothing else to play than Corky, and that is terrifying for me. And I actually really like that adaptation in Picks and Bands, because if Unicorns got lulled into a false sense of security mm -hmm. in game one, where H2K had the option to first pick Elise, choose to ban it, that kind of says to the Unicorns, maybe, maybe they still don't play Elise. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're not confident in it to really first smart. pick it. So it baits them into leaving it open and then leaving it to second rotation. So good adaptation by H2K to bait Unicorns out, and they fall for it. I would love to add, like, when it comes to HK's play, though, I think they just need to relax a bit. There's this famous poet I like called Drake. He has a <laughs> saying called, they, he, they need to replace their trigger fingers with Twitter fingers. They need to calm down a bit, play with more patience, because they are dying all over the place. Yeah, they were. And uh, to me, if we look at the H2K that we have as the perfect image of H2K, uh, a little while ago now, strategically very strong, playing out those lane swaps. I almost feel like they are getting back to that, but one step at a time. Their jungle pressure early is back, their lane swaps early is back, and the only thing that is missing now is how they play the mid and the decision making. Will we see H2K's final form soon? <laughs> I hope so. We'll see what happens. We're also going to check in with you guys on Twitter, where earlier we asked who you thought will win the regional qualifier and make it to Worlds, and at Andreas Friedrich wrote, Fnatic will win over Origin, and H2K will win. These three teams would represent Europe at its finest. Interesting. I have to agree. As much as I would love to see some of what unicorns have to offer when it comes to their different unique dynamics in picks and bands that we actually haven't seen a lot recently, I feel like sending those three teams is the strongest chance that Europe will have. Yeah, I have to agree simply because uh, the results speak for themselves. Like, I cannot come in with my bias. Of course, I want to work out to yeah. proceed and we're doing our best, but... Uh, based off of results, obviously H2K, Origin and Fnatic would be the best representative at, at this time. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. It isn't over yet, though it is 2-0 <laughs> and o for H2K. The Unicorns can still come back in this one. So let's go over to the guys at the desk to take us into picks and bands. Thank you very much, Shox, and the rest of the analyst desk. And props to you, Marta, for a little bit of honest feedback. They're talking about Europe's chances at Worlds and who's going to give the best show. H2K and UOL are fighting for the championships Championship points at the moment. Whoever wins here will have the highest, whether it goes to seeds or whether or not they qualify. Uh, quick reminder, though, before we carry on, later today, we will be heading over to the American LCS, which is taking place in a Madison Square Garden. You can actually see the stage being built up where Team Liquid and Impulse will be doing battle. Yeah, and if Fnatic come ahead of Origin tomorrow, that means whoever wins this match, this best of five, will actually go to Worlds just by having the most champion, championship points available, because obviously they have points from Spring Split. Origin wasn't in the Spring Split, so definitely interesting perspective, because everybody expects Fnatic to win, so in H2K's heads, 
they could be one match away from potential just auto qualification for Worlds, avoiding exactly. that regional qualifier but at the end. Whichever but team wins is supporting Fnatic tomorrow yeah. because that's sure, their course, ticket to Worlds. Of course, but it's, is this going to make H2K a little more safe? Or are they going to keep playing very greedy? I What's going to change for last game? I mean, they've won two games so far. But it hasn't been pretty in the sense that they keep getting a good early game and then have a messy, messy mid game that needs to be fixed. Pick and ban, though, is their first stage where they have been doing well compared to Unicorns and Love, who seems stuck on this corky here. It's a very early rotation. You have a lot of liberties when you're playing a pick and ban against the Unicorns of Love, though. They're pretty much handing it to you on a silver crowd. Kalista banned out, Lulu banned out. They know so far that they have to ban Sivir again. This gives HDK the option. Do we want at least first pick? Or will we ban it and just do a different adaptation? This time they ban it, so they have a different pick in mind. They're going to force Unicorns of Love to ban Sivir here, yeah. and then they want something. What do they want? Oi! So that's going to throw his banner. Right here, normally, you would always see Sivir pick coming in for Yannan. You take it away from Vardax, which is the key thing. And no real surprise. Nope. This is what you got to keep doing. So Unicorns are now once again in a situation where I guess they dodged the bullet of Tristana. But now you're facing with what has been the best AD carry for H2K all split long. The Sivir coming in. So these engages we have seen where they have struggled a few times to find the right engage, now becomes a lot more powerful. And being out of position for these engages obviously becomes a lot harder when you have on the hunt, buffing your entire team, speeding you up. So misstepping will be a lot more forgiving and also just easier to find the targets that you want. However, Ryu will have to change his champion pick. No longer has that assassination potential. To see how they react. Also, Unicorns of Love have the counter pick in mid lane. Honestly, haven't really used it too much so far. Would have actually rather see it go to visit Chachi. I mean, Gangplank is an option to put pressure in this matchup. Yeah, he can use it as a last pick. I do think Gangplank as well is safe enough if you want to blind pick him. Agree. He has very few bad matchups up at the top lane where he can like he can farm against basically everything. So that could still be an option. Otherwise, Varus is open for the last pick. Corky is still open if they want to run a full poke composition, which is what they're building for right here. And you can see the pivot there uh, in terms of the support pick. Bram for Hillesang. Uh, we talked extensively about that support earlier today in game two. And just all of the strengths that it can bring, especially for Hillesang, who's got quite a lot of experience on that champion. Yeah, and the thing is though, H2K, see exactly the same we do. Okay, Nidalee has been locked in for Horo. It is a fantastic early game jungler. Seen a lot of success over in LPL when we see someone like Swift use it. However, if you're expecting the Corky to come in, and even the Varus last pick, you can start already now building a composition that should be able to pick them off. Lee Sin can kick them back, can apply early pressure, can not match the Nidalee, but at least he can try and be a bit more back up counter gank. Both junglers are incredibly aggressive, and it all depends who just who gets the first jump. If Nidalee finds you in the jungle while you're doing a camp, connects a spear, you're dead. If Lee Sin finds you have a first, you know, connects the Q, follows up, kicks, you'll likely die as well. So there's a lot of aggressive play potential on both sides. Worst case, they just dodge each other in the jungle. They have high enough of ability to dodge the fights if they don't want to. We'll have to see if H2K can actually use this Treasury Sin combination. You know, if you can see some kicks into hooks, you know, some fancy lantern plays, because so far, synergy between Lulix and Kasing hasn't been the greatest. I just see that blind pick, Gangplank, we mentioned before, so you keep that last pick for, for Power Beaver, and even in a poke composition, Gangplank does really well. Last second change, though. <clears throat> for the Unicorns of Love. Gonna go for that tank top lane. If it's a pivot to the tank top, what mid lane is Power of Evil gonna play? You do have AP from the jungle, you've got a lot of sort of late game from Tristana. Is he gonna go safe? I want something with, with good zone control because I think Braum excels with mid lane champions that can build up this zone control. If you connect a Q, Winter's Bite, you don't even have to proc it because it slows targets down enough. And your mid laner can follow up you know, with those cooldown abilities. Honestly, and the lane, Bram Tristana, I'm a super fanboy. I love this lane. This is my favorite lane to play, watch, and just commentate about because there's so much outplay potential, mostly with aggressive jumps on the Tristana because Bram could chase you with his own jump, put up the shield, and force the trades to be 2v1 against the support while Tristana is hammering away on a single target, which he does incredibly well. It is a lane, though, where Unicorns of Love, as we've mentioned time and time again, they don't tend to do that well or be aggressive, the bottom lane. They're going to have to do, be, uh, to be aggressive if they want to use this lane properly. Ryu might just go for an Orianna if he wants to save pick now that Arya has been banned away for him. Instead, though, blind picking the Fizz. Fizz was the only champion that Ryu played when he picked up a win against Origin. All other champions were losses. 
And we touched on the 2v2 interaction of Tristan Abram versus X, Y, or Z. We've not had standard lanes this series yet. H2K have been able to get deep wards down and have been able to dictate the first few minutes of gameplay. You will have to change something if they want to get those standard lanes. Yeah, we always get the standard lanes delayed after the first tower goes down, and it's been in favor of H2K, so we have seen Hillesang and Vardax being put in, in a disadvantage already from that. And H2K, in this case, can just look to do exactly the same, even though Shin does a lot better in a one-on-one -on -one lane. It's a bold move by H2K, though. This composition that they've drafted Pretty. together is... Yeah. I think we're going to have to find I mean, different I think we, I'll open that. it to Solaris uh, after this uh, segment or wine a little bit. <laughs> because they're going all in. Before we go to the inevitable Devour Kale, <laughs> our people just locked in. H2K will have to snowball. They have very few what they call combat mechanics if Ryu falls behind, because he will eventually become the split pushers when they rotate Hyarn into the mid lane. Sivir is their only reliable lave clear as well, so if these two key members fall behind, which is obviously really hard because you have Stan United to help you out, then H2K is in trouble. However, Unicorns, yeah, kill mid. Reminder, this is 514, where yeah. changes were made, but this is Devourer, Kale mid, and it left a lot to be desired against Fnatic last week. Yes, UOL did get one or two early dragons, but at the end of the 30-odd minute game, PoE hadn't even completed his sated Devourer. In case people haven't seen it, Devourer into Nash's Tooth is like the two key items in the start. Problem is, it takes a long time to scale up to become really relevant. It has a lot of consistent damage if you can sit there and keep smacking left and right. But Power Weaver was very bad at moving around the map and getting these stacks for himself. He never took Rift Scuttlers. He That's two stacks. barely did anything in terms of jungle camps. You can just get an assist on the jungle minions and you get a stack, and he didn't do it. So very slow stacking for him. He needs to really change that if he wants to have an impact in this game. Yeah, we'll have to see if uh, Unicorns of Lost Team Comp can help him out with that final game coming up here. So if you're on Twitter, you know, if you are Trigger Fingers, become Twitter Fingers. <laughs> Hashtag H2K win if you're rooting for H2K or... If you're looking for more games from the Hovid Arena in Stockholm, you need to give Unicorns of Love your power. We are loading up into game three, where H2K want to sweep the championship points and a foot in the door, the 2015 World Championships. Now, will we see the Unicorns put emphasis on Rift Scuttlers, camps and dragons? Dragon gives you five stacks, you get a Scuttler on the way out and get another camp that's 10 stacks immediately. Or, you know, simply kill his assist, I believe, he use stacks as well. So, you might see uh, a bloodbath come out. But it's still a slow one for yeah. Power Weaver. It's a slow scaling mid lane. He's gone back to that once again. So, you have now this setup for Unicorns of Love that needs time to be effective outside of the Nidalee in the jungle. So, Horror needs to do everything. They've changed Hang on. the level one strategy. Now they're setting up a trap because H2K, both games, invaded into the jungle. Odo Amne. You're gonna have to face check. Watch for concussive blow. Watch for brown passive. Do it! Do it! Do it! Oh, oh my ward! That the was ward. so smart. How valuable is that ward? Ryu started playful and trickster and H2K. Why would you? Why would you stand at the edge of that brush when you're about to face check? If just brown passive gets applied, you can immediately stun somebody right now. Unicorns, they're chasing. That's what I want to see. Get that winter's bite down. Follow up with auto attacks. Anti climax. <laughs> but no deep vision. And no greed. What's going on? <laughs> Where were the blind ends? Big team fight level one. Didn't happen. One CS for Vardex though. Vardex, the superior AD carry. Yeah, completely out, out CSing across the board here. Gold lead <laughs> for Unicorns. <laughs> so, again, when it comes to Unicorns and their comp here, where Kale can work, this hurts a lot to say, is against the Fizz. <laughs> when it comes to like Fizz. Is so reliant, like AP Fizz is so reliant on apply your ulti, get the damage percent, and then obviously trickster in onto that target. Like that's your burst combo. Kale ulti is gonna stop that. It's gonna stop the one shot from happening later on. Fizz will obviously need a couple levels before he can really start using that combo of you dashing and aggressively jumping out. Power Evil using that advantage. He gets the pressure for the first time, I believe, today. He's actually pressuring mid early. If you look at the compositions as well, Unicorns of Love now have the Tristana. That was on the side of H2K before. H2K always amassed a tower lead in these lane swaps. Can the Unicorns do the same? Can they manage to not fall behind in lane swaps? We have seen the last game where they didn't want to fast push a tower, even though H2K were doing it, ended up basically just doing nothing on the map. Recall too late, open up for deep vision for H2K. One thing as well about this push from Power of Evil, it enables the Nidalee to invade into the jungle. Play that aggressive style you want to use, and we can already see how Unicorns are loved. 
should at least be moving in, but instead they're just backing away. So right now they're not doing anything on the map. So Power Weaver gets the push, he gets back up from his team. They're watching him pushing that wave instead of going for their jungle. Because what Unicorns of Love should do is clean the remaining part of their jungle, then move to top wave. Threaten the 3v0 dive so he can at least get that tower first. They're letting Vardex push on his own. Hilusang has done absolutely nothing so far. He's pathing into the river and back, but the jungle's empty. Mid lane is 1v1, so so far H2K just allocating their resources better than Unicorns of Love. And think back to the last game where Odo Omni saw he had a free lane, he instantly just teleported to the lane and got the 1v1. The reason he didn't do it this time around was, was because the rest of H2K were out of vision. They were hiding, hiding, I say they were in the river, there was no wards for H2K. So he didn't know exactly where they were in the map, if they were sitting ready to dive him, that's why he didn't teleport. Now with Tristana, you can take down the tower pretty fast, so we might just see a trade from both teams. It looks to be the case. UOL were unable to make that trade in the first game of the series. Playful tricks the forward from Ryu. He's a little low on mana, but here comes Lulex. Defensive early flash from Power of Evil. He sidestepped a Sonic Wave. There's a teleport coming in from Busy Chachi. He dredge lines onto Lulex. Double buffs are tasty, but he has a reply teleport from Odo Wamne. Odo, Odo. Odo. Flash torn. There's a flash away. Sonic Wave up. Lulex. Continues to chase a little aggressively. First blood to H2K. And this is one of those cases where a mistake gets made two minutes ago and it gets it manifests itself two minutes later. Unicorns of Love were consistently one step behind in this race. Eventually, that opens up one move first for H2K. That was the gank in the mid lane. Horror was nowhere close. He was slightly underleveled in catching up to Luex. Luex was pathing efficiently. He gets mid first. Notice how Ryu went in with E. Luex jumped to him. Then Ryu queued away. He allowed his jungler to close the gap, force the flash from Power of Evil. And again, pressure on PoE when he's running this late game scaling carry. And honestly, just oversteps his boundaries. All he needs to do is get Devour, start stacking up, and just don't go for these fights. But also just very greedy in terms of his own warding in that lane. You know four guys are on the bottom side of the map, so there's only one way they can gank you, that's from that bottom side. He sat on that Trinket Ward, and it's still available for him. He didn't use it. You gotta place that one down in the river, and then you know you stay to the top side, and you should have an easy path away, because you should spot when the gang is coming. Yep. Well, the timer for that Devourer is on the clock. Two Doran's rings for Power of Evil. I want to see how quickly he can start building those stacks up. He does have a small farm lead over Ryu, but obviously Ryu picked up first blood, so that's going to be more beneficial. Lulex going to hold Odo on his hand, shoving the wave into Chachi. And that is one advantage for Vizzy Chachi now in the top lane. The wave was very slowly pushing towards him. Ends up even missing a few of the CS, so they're going to be fairly even on that one. Not even that big of an advantage. We see the trade oh, down bottom lane, though. Defensive flash from Kasing. Lantern's actually going to pull Hyun and back. And Vardex and Hillisang, they play aggressive in that lane. Yeah, you can't. If you juke sideways, you can't afford to play closer. Hillisang oh, gets pulled out of jump. Prediction. Ryu is roaming, though, top left of your screen. Watch him coming. And doesn't have access to chum the waters. Hillisang's managed to make it out. Vardex flash and heal available. He's gonna flash the point oh, for the Ryu did not manage to connect. The Lantern is up looking for an assist. The stun! There's no tower to fall back to. Hyonan finds a kill with a boomerang. Ryu wanted to follow the flash after his tricks line. He would connect the damage, but he just did it slightly too late, so didn't get the damage. Down on to Vardex. We'll get him down though, due to the fact there was no tower. And Unicorns were playing aggressive in a lane. With no. I mean, Backup. they should have had vision of where Ryu uh, was because the mid lane has been pushed all the time. Problem for them, they were being backed up by Horror, but Horror went left, right, up and down, but didn't even come close to entering that fight, so wasted pressure. Luex adding way more for his team so far. Horror's under leveled as well, so again, touching on that jungle matchup where Luex was successfully shadowing Oduamne in top, allowing him to push in that wave. Horror failed to do that for his team. Initially as well, the gank from Luex put Ryu ahead in the mid lane. That allowed Ryu to roam to the bot lane, so H2K are moving their resources, just outsmarting and outplaying the Unicorns of Love on the map. Talking about resources, Yon is going to start building up gold at an accelerated rate. Pickaxe into that Avarice Blade, already got a CS advantage over Vardex thanks to the early lane assignments and just how H2K played it out. Kasing, Odo and Yon are now grouping up to try shove in this top wave. Chachi and Horo are nearby, but they're not making a move yet. So after the fight down bottom lane, H2K at the wave pushing up towards Vardex. You can see him sit down here near his own tier 2 tower to clear out the wave. So they knew he couldn't move away. He didn't want to recall and lose everything. One of the reasons they can swap H2K, or sorry, Yarnan to the top side. Don't want him to try and overextend for anything and keep maximized farm on him. It does set Odo Amna a little bit behind, but he will return to the bottom lane and get that big wave Vardex is pushing into him. Innocent and Horo, they're actually going aggressive here. Yeah. Kasing, is he going to get caught by those concussive blows? This is a 3v3. Dragon's Rage has already been used. 
Lantern Shield is blocking some damage. Horror's looking for more. Lantern is here again. He looks out. Ryu is going to look for Chum the Waters. It connects onto Horo. Chachi goes down. Boomerang, double kill Yarnit. How is Ryu allowed to leave this lane again and again? The babysitter Power Weaver sitting there watching him and then looks away for a few seconds and Ryu is long gone. He gets another kill now. He's roaming with his team. And all Power Weevil is getting is the damage on this mid tower. And the answer just lies in the superior vision control. We see Tristana slowly pushing in the bot lane, just scared of potential people showing up. She should be fast pushing top lane. Shield comes out too late from Busy Chachi, uh, from Hillisang on that Brahm as well. They're overcommitting, they're leaving Kiara untouched. Even if Ryu wasn't here, they would have lost that engage simply on a 3v3. So just, they're not thinking ahead of themselves, Unicorns of Love. They're buying into the chaos and they're drowning in it. And this really is one of the problems about this. Runeglaive, sorry, Devour, Kale. The fact that you're now sitting on a jungle item, which effectively barely offers you anything other than the smite you can use. So there's no threat really from Power Beaver other than pushing it. So Ryu can just freely walk away. He's like, well, I don't care about you. I'm just going to walk out of this lane. And then he goes top, joins for another fight. And H2K win that fight convincingly. H2K trying to defend their bottom tower. Oduwam is under a lot of pressure from Vardax. Fans still in favor of Vardax and the Unicorns. But as it stands, two and a half thousand gold down before we've hit 10 minutes and a group in the bottom lane. I think we're going to see another fight. Hellasang goes in, gets taunted. Lux follows up. Here's Horror for the counter gank. Good though. bait. Now let's see. Hellasang is in retreat. Yarnan has arrived. We are starting to move from the mid lane already, so there's a timer on this place. Oh, Stand United. Lulex with the plays. Finds a kill. Oduwamna is going to look for a taunt. Catches Vardax out. Yarnan is gifted his fourth kill. Lulex. Follows the resonating strike up. He's still looking for Horo. Horo's in full retreat. Sonic Wave has gone back in. Another one for Lulex. Power of Evil may get himself a reply. Ward hop away. Challenging Smite for the slow, the true damage. And Lulex makes it out clean. His mind, his body, and his team are telling him yes. Fish goes wide. Oh, Power of Evil, you're next. He's going to put down the intervention. It will not be enough. And the kill! This early game has been all Lulex. He's been everywhere, he's been ganking the lanes, he's been counter ganking. He's chasing for the kills, setting off that Shen TP as well. What a beautiful setup from a guy who's been so heavily criticized coming into this playoffs. Ding, 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 round three and Lulex knocks Unicorns of Love out. Dragon secured, eight kills to zero. Seven of them Lulex has been involved in. And a fourth thousand gold lead. Yeah, this all started when H2K were two towers up to one. Sivir against Tristana in a lane swap. That should never happen. At worst, you should be even. And it just shows that the Unicorns weren't ready to adapt in picks and bans. They steal away the twist, but they don't play to her strengths. If you let yourself be outpushed as a team on a map with a scaling mid laner like that, you, usually you speed up the early game with the added gold with gold in a lane swap. So you're fine playing late, late, uh, late game carries if you can just trade tower for tower, tower for tower, maybe for dragon, but they're not doing that. They're not achieving that. And then Luix, yeah, he's completely out jungling hard this game. It's just the same problem again and again and again. This time you have a very, very slow scaling mid laner. He has the pushing advantage and yet Ryu gets to leave the lane all the time. So whenever Ryu leaves, Horo can just be in a position to walk mid and Power Weaver calls, okay, come mid, take mid tower straight away. Back away side lane, don't fight, don't risk anything. Mm -hmm. Let me just push this tower. Again and again and again. Unicorns didn't have to force anything in the side lanes because Power Weaver was scaling in mid. When you've got to use a buster shot on Grom to stay alive, there are problems. There are many not problems. Not fully focused, not fully paying attention to the game. And Unicorns, if they lose this game, they are behind H2K in championship points. And if Fnatic win tomorrow, it means H2K goes to Worlds. And looking, one step in the door. One more game, one more victory away from that. And looking how this HTK want to go. Spell shield on Tjaren here. And they're settling down in what they what they want to do here. This 1-3-1 one, one push on the bottom. Maybe rotate Fizz down to the middle for extra pressure. Once these mid tower falls, HTK, they want to settle into a 1-3-1 one, one split push. They have their mid lane assassin on Ryu, which they rotate to the bot lane. They have a wave killer AD carry on Tjaren. They put him in the mid lane. And they have a global presence or double global presence on Oluwamne. They can put in either side lane. That's the way they want to close out this game. That opens up for potential picks from the Unicorns of Love. But it's going to be hard. They don't have the hard engage on Hillisang right now. He's more peel disengage. The Unicorns simply don't have an option to make picks not this game compared to before. Because if you look at what HTK has to defend themselves, Spell Shield from Yarnan is going to make it very tough for Chachi potentially to land anything onto him. We saw the hook before. We have Fizz 
jumping around with Trickster, so that's gonna be a tough one. Kale offers a slow, but that's the only CC if you wanna go ganker in the side lane. So it's extremely difficult for Unicorns to even create that pick. So we're just sitting here where H2K can slowly, if they don't read, that is, yep. take over the entire map, wait for Deep Vision, and wait for Unicorns to be out of position, and then punish them. And you can see how much pressure H2K are putting. Oda Wamne up top, we've got Ryu. Fairly well farmed at the moment down in the bottom lane. And obviously Kasing and Hyanan applying pressure on that last remaining outer turret. It's the last key before breaking into UOL's jungle completely. Although maybe it may not even be needed. Look at that map. Oro Farmame up top, connects past the ward. The spear goes in for the jump. Oruan is going down. He'll have to taunt up. He has no energy. And the spear connects. He's down. But in the mid lane, reaction. Well, we do see Chumla Waters come out. Losing Odo for that tower. H2K will be happy with the trade. It's always worth it to trade one kill for a tower, because again, you already have the lane pressure. All you are looking for is just keep taking down out of turrets, so the entire map belongs to you. The more turrets you get, the further you push the team down to their own base, well, the less of their jungle they can obviously take. And now Lulex, he's going to get... Nice Horo! Denied! Lulex has a fantastic game, at least in here. Picked it almost every game, and he's the obviously happy. The grin on Lulex's face when he picked that kill up. It's one of those games where deep everything vision. you do works. It's obviously set up by the deep vision, by the fact you've been pushing all the lanes at once. Or I'm going to upgrade your trinket once you hit level 9, then he can start warding up the top side. You have Sidestone on two members who can roam freely around from H2K. Everything should belong to them. And Power of Evil, he's still waiting to scale, and he's on a devour kill. If she loses the control of her own jungle, there's less options to get devour stacks. If you're watching at home and you don't quite know how many stacks PoE has, he has two. <laughs> Yay! 28 remaining. By that he time, Luex got 37. He wants yeah. to keep it. Skull Crab gets denied here by his teammates. <laughs> we'll find out who secures it. Kasing. Kasing gets caught. The play comes out. The box is down. Vardex did go in aggressively. Kasing is going to get taken out. The Glacial Fisher was put down, but they've traded support. Chum the Waters is out. Vardex is going to get caught up in the air. for UOL. Used to keep him alive. Pull back in. UOL are 5,000 gold down, but they are trading one for one in the jungle. Yeah, this type of fights you want to have. You know, Braum goes down, still applies passive. Glacial Fisher comes out, disengage. People waste their ultimates on the support, and then you can find quick to kill. Consistent damage coming out. However, it's okay. Disengage. This time they don't greet. We got to see the one of the reasons Power Evil wanted to play this Kale in this matchup here. The fish came in from Ryu, denied all the damage, denied the one-shot potential on your own AD carry. And that's what he can keep doing over and over. So as long as Unicorns are together as friends, you know, love, they're together here, then they can team fight and they can win. The power of friendship. Also that massive sword when he swings left and right and just claps just them slapping in the face. people like that is definitely beautiful. something you want. What you don't want to be is 4,000 gold down. And that's where the unicorns are right now. Dragon. Coming up in 30 seconds would be the second dragon for H2K. Can actually start building towards that aspect win condition. Should the game go late? We have no reason to assume it will. Except the last two games. <laughs> <laughs> Relatively anyway. But for H2K, they've hit themselves a few item spikes. Odo got that Sunfire building some MR as well. Ryu's still yet to complete one sort of top tier item. But he's only about 400 gold down. Power of Evil, despite being 40 CS down. The assists and the global gold from the towers playing into his favor. And with Dragon up and the strength of H2K, you are well are going to be very, very brave if they try to challenge this. With that Dragon, they deny Power of Evil a potential five stacks. He is still sitting on two stacks because Luix just counter jungled the Wolf as well. That leaves only the Grump available on the side of the map that PoE is playing on. You have to remember that. Yes, you have potential stacks all across the map, but if you can't reach them, if you get choked out, vision-wise, count the jungle, denied, zoned away, you're never gonna quench that thirst. You're never gonna get that Seda Devour, and then it's gonna be hard. Lux takes the Grump, Power Evil looks away. <laughs> Oro is also committing to some scaling. Gonna work towards that Rod of Ages as we see H2K settling into what is gonna be the norm, I feel, for the next few minutes. Shen with TP and almost down United up top. Ryu trying to pull some attention down bottom and just leave Hyanan, Mr. Wave Clear, Ultimate Deluxe on Sivir to maintain control of the middle of the map. It's the same setup for H2K. We talked about it before. We saw what happens when we have the 5 on 5 team fights. how there is a chance, at least, for Unicorns to pull it back into this game. We haven't seen the same greedy plays from H2K. It's been a little more calculated. It's been 
Honestly, a lot about Lulix. Whenever yep. he felt like I'm gonna go kill someone, he went for it and he managed to pull it off. And that's been really the biggest change for H2K in this game. And I think it all goes down to the early, early couple of minutes of this game where UOL were behind. Just 30 seconds or so, opened up for one gank in the mid lane that Lulix and Ryu, with good synergy, made work. Ever since, Ryu was able to leave mid lane first. If you're playing an aggressive jungler and you know you have the backup from your mid laner first, it opens up for so much place, you know, you're, you're liberated, you're so free in doing whatever you want. The worst thing was, when Ryu left that mid lane, it was in the face of Power Ryu, he just walked out of the lane. And yet, fights kept on going in side lanes, he was like, see ya, went bot, got a kill for himself, or an assist at least, and that really helped HK snowball. There was no response, there was no counterplay from you all saying, okay, let's just put Horror in the mid lane, 2v0 push this tower and take that down early. And we just see with HTK putting pressure, stealing away the jungle camps again. Power of Evils cannot stack that to Val. He's still on two stacks. He got that four minutes ago because the jungle is not his. Now, getting a fully stacked Devour is a luxury for the mid lane Kale. It is needed, but it's not 100% needed to reach a late game where you can deal proper damage. It just delays everything you do because now you're looking at three, four items fully completed before you become a massive threat. And that's the whole concern. It's why Devour junglers, no, we barely see them. He will get a Grum. Yay! Yay! Three stacks, everybody. Look how happy that Wolf is as well. Oh, Booba. Suddenly, Power of Evil looking to at least double his stacks here. Any time now. Yay! He just doubled his stacks. He's well on his way. 26 to Satan. Now, we, we should mention H2K have got all Alta Towers. Yes, they've got themselves a 5,000 gold deeper. For the last eight minutes, Unicorns of Love have not given up more. They are losing control. They are losing pressure. Yes, but they are still holding on to their inner turrets. The thing is, the last time we were in a similar situation, H2K actually greeted and they gave away much more. H2K doing this is perfectly acceptable. Keep the lead as is because eventually you have complete control of the map. Everybody's accounted for it, wards. What do you do? You peel back and you go for the Baron. Yeah, because you don't have a siege comp. You're not looking to try and walk in and have Unicorn sit in massively or wave play everything so easily. That's just pushing farm to them. So, wait for Baron to spawn, start setting up vision around it, keep your 1 3 1 going, but obviously put Ryu on the top side because she has no teleport. And now you can really start being aggressive. Well, the vision seems to be in place for that play. But Chachi, he's going to step close. Yana's been. Caught up, man, we're actually on the hunt. Stand United comes in. Chachi hits the wrong wall. That's not what you wanted. Ryu's arrived as well. H2K are in there for the party. They've got their 11th kill and they want another tower. And this is exactly what we are talking about. You're not looking to siege, you're looking to pull back, threaten these objectives, say to Unicorns of Love, we are killing your vision. You have no idea of where we are. Eventually, you overreach on the hunt. Stand United. Easy peasy. Kill the Nautilus. I like that way of engaging though. We're like, 80 carry, go! And then we just shen <laughs> all the onto you and we will get to someone. They managed, I think they blocked Mr. Chachi's hook. He ended up basically moving nowhere. I'm not sure if he hit the wall or if it was like the shen coming down. Yarn and Ryu just make for perfect shen delivery systems and that's all you need at this point in the game. If you're this far ahead, you can face tank. And even if they kill Yarn, there's so much more damage following up. And again, now they can step backwards. Look at the vision. Hilosang had to take a detour, the scenic route. Some of drift and sneak a couple of wards in, but he couldn't get the Skull Crab, so eventually they'll be caught out. And they saw him as well on the pink ward, so H2K is aware of what's going on. Five stacks, Power Beaver. He's getting a few jungle camps. It's just way too late for him to have an impact on the game. Chachi will get attacked one more time. He's gonna be tanking out the turret. Playful tricks to break the turret aggro, but Lulex gets caught by Dredge Line. Here comes Hyanin. The Unicorns of Love have pulled enough members to defend the tower and dissuade the dive. At the same time, Power Reveal is split pushing on the top lane. He can push it that wave instead of sieging the tower. He can take those juicy jungle camps. Grump and Wolves available to him. Get more stacks. This was a greedy play and not what HTK were building towards. They had completely control in terms of vision. But they gave it up for a dive on a tier tower on a tank. And we have to also call out the fact that Power of Evil has got 210 CS at 21 minutes. Yes, that Sector Devour is slow, but he's farming up a lot of gold. But this is what we just talked about. Getting that fully stacked is the bonus. That's the luxury as the mid lane kill. You still have great scaling into late game. It just takes longer, but with that farm, now he gets another one, slowly speeding it up. And what I want to highlight is that Scuttle Crab, yes, two stacks, that's nice, but it just buys them time 
for the next Baron bait. HGK completely gave up control of the map, and that, that's what it means in League of Legends right now. One small mistake can cost you so much momentum. You build for three, four minutes to set up these plays. Yes, they might get a dragon here, third dragon of the game, like but... pulling the wrong piece out when you're playing Jenga. Yeah. Please, Ryu, why are you on the top side right now? Please go down to the bottom side. You want to contest this dragon. You want to get the third one. So you want to make sure that once you sit on four dragons that have the potential number five, you don't care about the fact that Power, Power Evil still wants to scale or the Tristana. Then you force them to that fight. So take it. Ryu has moved down. That's great. We see how the Shin is always moving on the opposite side of the map where HK is focused on an objective. Go stop the Baron now. Unicorn setting up for a bit of a Baron bait. They obviously don't know about that pink ward and the ward in the back. Also, Vardax finished the red buff without giving an assist to Power of Evil. Not a team player. Very selfish. And you just gotta wonder how much experience they have with getting this Sated Devara Kale stack because it was the same deal with Fnatic. At the moment, Unicorns of Love in a little bit of trouble. Chachi not gonna be able to get out. He That's flashes, a tank, though. but he's got kicked backwards. Kill credits to Kasing as we see Power of Evil swinging furiously from the side. Teleport is up, 25 seconds before Chachi is alive. Oh, Get nice hook. Connects the taunt, follows, Heal but Helenzyme is blocking so much damage. Glacial Fish is gonna slow everybody down. Unicorns of Love may have defended the tower. Vardax has got one. He's rocket jump forward, but Ryu's gonna land on his head with Playful Trickster. Reckoning comes out. Vardax again, lashes forward. That's a double kill. Vardax may be able to do more. Two members of HDK are down. They are in full retreat, and Unicorns are looking for more. They're looking for better. Baron, there's a teleport from Chachi. And this is why I absolutely love Braum as a support pick. Who connects on Horo? He was saying jumps in front, put up the Valtor. Glacier Fisher comes out, Peel, resulting in a Baron attempt. Can they steal it though? Lulex is nearby here. He's on the other side of the Baron. Hillisang landing the hook, but look here for Lulex. We'll have to find out. Kasing's got himself a kill into Hillisang. 2,000 hit points on Baron. The fight's breaking out. Stand United! And has arrived. It's two, it's three kills for HDK. And Baron's low. Vonex will be able to help get one before being taken out. Chachi's got the kill credit. Four down, that's the ace. Unicorns of Love managed to defend the tower. They used the KL ult and used the Braum so well. HK diving in there, got punished for it, but then we're still very early in the game and Unicorns are still very far behind. So they start the Baron, but HK is strong enough to stay around it. And with all this damage taken from it and the threat of Lulex, it's just so difficult. Miscommunication on the side of UOL. They're looking at Lulex, but at the same time, Hyarin is whacking away. Healersang is putting up the shield for defensive peel. That could have allowed a three second window where he could have focused the Baron. Instead, half the team was trying to deal with Kiaren, half the team was watching Lulex, and in the middle of all that, Baron was doing AoE damage. Eventually, they crumble. Miscommunication yet again by the Unicorns. This is the second time today we've seen the Unicorns of Love start Baron, look for where Lulex is, and put all the attention and focus on him. Remember, this is a team Power Evil gets to stack more. This is a team <laughs> oh. that has no... Hey! Okay, okay, yeah, no, fair enough. This is a team that has no shot caller. Okay, everyone is making the call, so everyone is calling. Kill the wolf. Sorry, Division. Sweden, Jag Elskidig. This is fantastic. 9,000 gold down, nine kills down. Three towers, three dragons. Unicorns of Love could not be in a more difficult situation. And now they need to look for one more Fantastic fight. 16 stacks on that Sated Devourer. One more Slowly fight. Growing. Or seven Rift Scugglers for that Sated Devourer. And then one more fight. <laughs> Let's see H2K go back to the 1 3 1. You got TP advantage now. Push up that bottom lane. Oh, the wave is already pushing for you. You can put the Shin there right now. His ulti will be ready in time before a fight should break out. Instead, though, they're keeping him mid. So they are allowing Unicorns at least to group and shove out one wave. It looks like Ryu wants to go back and, and uh, shop anyway. And Vardex, even though he's sitting on two items, before he was playing Triforce, BT, Corky, no damage. Now he has IH, Phantom Dancer, Tristana. That's probably one of the most lethal two item combinations in the game on AD carries. If he connects then with that Winter's Bite from Braum, gets the passive out. He can't do the thing. That requires Hillisang to not get caught though. Sham the Waters is that. Playful Tricks is going to go in. Horos down. Hillisang will follow quickly after. H2K looking for more. They've got two kills. Power of Evil does have intervention, but it won't be enough to save everybody's life. Their sentence goes wide, but it just does not matter. Another kill for Hyanin. Kill credit will go to Oduwamne. On to Chachi. And Vardags 
in a 1v5, now has to try defend. And it's just so simple for H2K whenever they want to start the fight. Sivir, first pick. It wasn't banned away at this time. Pop the ulti, use Shen. Ryu just jumps in on his own. He has Hourglass. He can easily dive the back line. And Unicorns of Love, while they can block a lot of damage, they have no way of really disengaging no. from this. They have to fully commit to these fights. It works when you're under a tower, when they jump on your jungle, and then Hillside can come deny the damage. But when he's the prime focus of H2K, things get rough. Horo spots out Ryu here on that Fizz. And he wants to steal. Will H2K make the same mistake? As they did before in the series, Hillisan catches the fish. Baron's actually going low now. It should be secured by H2K. It doesn't look like anybody's going to be able to secure this. Baron's still up. They've not killed the Baron. H2K have peeled out. They've pushed Unicorns away. And that will be the space that they need. Reuse low as his horn. Oh. Flash from Hillisan. He's going to be able to get one. Baron wants secured. Intervention used to keep Bardax up. Oh, to one there. So, so low. Lulix Retails. as well. Rocket jump comes forward. Rocket jump again. It's going to look for Kasing. Defensive play. H2K get Baron. Lose three. And you are well. Have 30 seconds. H2K wanted to delay the Baron. Didn't want to risk a steal. So they wanted to push Unicorns away. But it meant Ryu took so much damage. He had to like kite around on his own. And H2K they split up. UOL, they returned, and now they can smack down tower. And this is the first time I've seen UOL play well around their AD carry Vardex. They put the scale ultimate on top of him, say, go ham or go home. Hugosang jumps in front, puts up the shield. So much peel for Vardex, and he's finally dealing damage. Five kills here on him right now, two assists as well, and he's looking to finish his third item. Dragon's alive, Scott was gonna go down. 30 sec, 30 minutes into the game. If Unicorns can get this dragon, now is when that buff is effective. 6% Hillisang is going to look Gets for Joran. Vardax looking for him. The stun. One more hit is all they need, but Vardax has been able to get away. Oduwam is left in the middle of UOL. Intervention is available. It's used on Denied. Vardax. Defensive play from Ryu. He's gone over the wall. Stand United's being channeled. UOL are still together. Oduwam is here. They've got power of evil, though. Look at Vardax on the right hand side of your screen. He's trying to get away with his life. He's going to rocket jump over the wall. It's a one for three. Defensive flash from Horo. Vardex going to use the base gate to get away. And they do get away, but Dragon interrupted. There are two Swedish AD carries in this game, and they both really want to win. They're trying to carry their teams. Vardex tried before. Now it was Janen on Sivir. Triple kill. 11, 1, and 10 in this game. Nexus turret is down. H2K, they want to finish right now. They're on to Nexus turret number two. H2K, they want the clean sweep. They got Baron and Part Minions. They want to turn for Vardax, and they will find it. Spur it's Janen. 13, 1, and 10. They're on the Nexus. H2K. 3-0, the Unicorns! These explosive, explosive mid-games with the blink of an eye, suddenly the game can end. It just tells you if the Unicorns' early game was just a little bit better, you could have went game all the way to game 5, but H2K, fantastic early game. Every game managed to accrue a lead. A couple thousand gold, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 gold. Gold, no girls. Girl, oh. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> 5,000 gold in the lead, and that man right there, he should be happy. H2K had a better early game and a better pick and ban phase. Yep. If we look at all three games here. And Unicorns of Love, while they tried the hardest, always claw their way back into these games here. It often relied on H2K being a little bit too greedy. This game here, it was a little bit more relaxed for them. And then Lulex just showed up big time when it really mattered for them. The Unicorns of Love, the early deficits and the weaknesses in their picks and bans have been a problem all throughout playoffs. Arguably all throughout Summer Split. And unfortunately for them, they were exploited by H2K, who have a very good early game. And when they get to play their game, they get the lead for H2K. They are now very, very close to a World Championship spot. If Fnatic win tomorrow, H2K are in. They take the championship points. C, number two. And game three was all about that man. He can be happy. After that performance on Lee Sin, he was everywhere. Part of all the kills in the early game except for one. The only other player that I've seen play that confidently in this era, at least in the Western world, is Rush. Rush and Lee Sin last weekend, very similar thing. He knew he could get a kill, went for it. And Lulux did that all the time. And for a man that's got so much criticism and has a sub here waiting backstage, I think that's got to feel good to step up and deliver. This is the cool thing, though, when you play in front of a big crowd. If you have a good start, like you get that first kill going for you, you can just get so hyped. Yeah. 
Oh, so it can backfire for it's okay a few Ever times, slightly. maybe. maybe Being a little bit too greedy, but this twice. one, it was controlled from, from Lulix whenever he went in. Timed it with the Shen ulti as well, so, so effectively. Yeah, I feel like when we look at the series as a whole, it really was the same story over and over. And we saw very similar mistakes and very similar patterns. I would like to have these coaches sit back a little and talk to the players about resolving their mid-series, but it's something we'll have to explore at another time, because right now we're going to hear on stage where Pulse is going to be chatting to Kissing and the local hero, Hyanen. Thank you, quick shot. I'm joined by Kasing and Hyanen after that incredible series. Now, first off, Hyanen, did you feel like you had a home field advantage here? Because no one can deny you played out of your mind today. Uh, I just know that... <laughs> Yeah, uh, I really wanted to go to Worlds, so yeah, I felt like I had to step up a bit today. <laughs> Just really wanted to go to Worlds. Now, Kasing, you guys have been criticized a little for maybe losing your strategic edge, but do you feel that H2K have returned to the point when you first joined the team? Have they found that spark once again? <laughs> well, since we won, like, at third place again, so I guess, yeah, like, we actually won for once. Um, but yeah, I feel like everyone played super good, especially Hyanan. But uh, don't think you could have done that with all my fresh, but still. <laughs> he played really, really good, though. And I'm proud of him. Yeah, it was an incredible series. Now, Hyanen, looking at your team right now, in, in that series, Unicorns of Love, they can throw a lot of curveballs. We saw the KL come out once again, and we saw the Gangplank as well. How did you adapt to that, and how was it so easy for you to take that 3-0? Mm, I think Gangplank was quite annoying, but uh, the KL was like, he started to split, and we just looked for plays around, around the map, and that's not that hard to play against if he doesn't get super fed. So I think Gangplank was the hardest to play against of those two. Yeah, well, for sure. Now, last one here, Kissing. You were talking about how important this series is to you, and now that you've won it, you're so close to the Worlds right now. You've secured at least a first seed in the regionals, and if Fnatic win tomorrow, you will be in Worlds. What did this series mean to you? Um, well, I just think hashtag Fnatic win. That's, that's, that's all I can say. But, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm really... Uh, I can't really explain in words how happy I am right now, because it, there's still one more step until, yeah, my actual dream is like, come, well, come true, so. <laughs> well, one last step. Once again, congratulations, gentlemen, on that win. We're gonna throw it over to the analysts to take a look at that series. Well, FNC win or OG win, that's tomorrow, but today it was H2K win in 3-0, and which funnily enough ends them up in the same position they were in uh, when the spring playoffs rolled around. Let's see what we can take out of this series for both teams, though, starting maybe with the Unicorns of Love as well and picks and bans. And, well, it's the story we've been telling. The AD carry and the bans that they could focus on the mid lane has told this entire series. I feel like Vardax and Tristana did a good job. Yeah. I'm happy that the both Swedish players actually really, really stepped up, went back to their Swedish roots, played like Vikings, really, you know, <laughs> really pushed for it. For Valhalla, you know? <laughs> and with that in mind, it's like uh, the KO is the thing that I need to criticize, because the thing with Devar is you want to get sated, but you leave your teammates starved. Yes, and that's such a massive point. Like, last time I almost hated the Kale. Mm. This time I just severely dislike the Kale mm. because there is a target for the ultimate now to go on in Vardax. Mm. Although Unicorns don't really play around their AD carry all that well often. Uh, the one person that whoever, however, that got starved was Horo. Yeah. So much of that jungle was taken away. Once Paravival actually got himself out into the jungle, started taking camps, uh, Horo was like level 11 when Ulex was level 13. Yeah. It makes the ability for Horo to do anything, item-wise he was behind, experience, everything just starved Horo, and it's a big problem for the Unicorns. It is, and it's funny how it's gone from a big good thing for them in the quarterfinals to kind of something they have to work on now, but that might also be normal, because in the end he has only been on the team for a couple of weeks, yet on the other side. Lulex, so many questions, so much criticism, and a lot of it honestly deserved. But that was amazing how he stepped up in this one. Not perfect, but especially that early game pressure that H2K likes to play around. I feel like in the final game we got to see Lulex final form. But is it also important to note that it's very hard to judge a jungler because it's really, really dependent on how the team is doing. 
Because in this series, like Horo, if you just take a look at this series, he looked kind of bad as well. But usually, like a jungler has to be judged based on how the team is doing. And the team is doing well, Lu is going to do well as well. So that's is really important to keep in mind. Yeah, a lot of people stepping up in that team. But one person in particular looking at the game through all three games overall. And we'd like to highlight the OP play of H2K's AD carry, Hjarnin. He is our player of the series with a 25.5 KDA and 82% kill participation. Well, a lot of people did really well on H2K, almost everybody, but here to take that home crowd advantage and take it to the next level, even though Vardex also showed his best, that is nice thing. Yes, uh, I mean, Kanan stepping up big time, because Singh wanted to put himself in there with the whole, uh, you can do it without <laughs> my thresh. thresh. Well, there were a lot of plays that Kanan made without Thresh by his side, but, you know, Good to see Hyanan back up to this top form that we've seen him in before. It's been a little while, I have to feel, since uh, Hyanan's put on a performance like that. I'm, I'm really happy that usually when I t t looked at Hyanan, I saw him as consistent and he pushed his limit to 80%. But in this series, he pushed what his champion could do to 99.9%. .9%. I'm not ready to say 100% because... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, this series was really, really good from Hyanan. And I think just from H2K in general, there was a big improvement over what we saw uh, against Origin, specifically from kind of the, the warding synergy. Lulex had about 35% more wards placed in this game. He finally started buying Sightstone. Uh, Kasing <laughs> bought 39 pinks in three games to Hillisang's 10. What H2K did was put oh. down the wards, control the vision, and punish unicorns for the most part. There were a couple of slip-ups here and there, but it was a good adaptation by H2K. We'll now have to see whether they can continue that growth. Yeah, definitely. A step in the right direction for H2K. We do want to highlight something from the UOL side of things. You guys at home were calling out your own big plays, and at Lucas Neis tweeted, he does it again. Here is your LCS big play of the day. Who will it be? Unicorns, they're too late to this party. Baron is going to go down shortly. Horos coming in. Stolen! Oh, it could be Baron! Baron! Unicorn to Blur may be able to do something with this. Uh, I was sitting here, actually, we uh, can cheat a little bit because we can watch on the, the actual in-game. I was like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen again. And it did. <laughs> it's incredible. And at least they got that to take away from it. A little bit of magic is still there. But for the unicorns in general, it's just not enough. Uh, all in all, they still have the gauntlet to run through. Do you think that there are things that they can fix in time for that to make it to Worlds? And again, that question comes into part, would they be a good representative in that? Ooh, that's, uh, that's a big question. Can they fix it? Because we've asked this question time and time again. Can they fix these issues? Yeah, Can true. they fix it? They come week to week, still no Callista. I mean, I feel like it's been enough weeks. Last time we saw it was week four. Yeah. That's enough time to put to put that champion Maybe it's too in early. your arsenal. For I, them. Like, yeah. like, I feel always my biggest criticism for you all is like, I always like them. They're cool guys. They bring this like uh, special flair to the league scene. But I feel like their play style does not work well long term. Right. And I feel they need probably like uh, the rest between the seasons to fix all these issues because there's problems in lane swaps and picks. There's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of issues. I think the biggest problem is the play style of the unicorns that people like to dub different names is not actually a style. Mm. It's their opponents making a mistake and allowing unicorns to make picks, to make anything that they can on the map. It works well against teams that are below you. The teams above you will make a couple of mistakes, and if you can capitalize on them, sometimes they'll end up in a win. But on a world stage, those opportunities are not going to come up very often. So unicorns have to make their own play better before they can look to contend on that stage. Yeah. For sure. I think that is fair. And that is third place settled here. Just one match left before our playoff bracket is complete. So let's take a look at it. Of course, Fnatic and Origin, they will go at it tomorrow for the Summer Championship and the number one European seed at World. That also means with third place locked in, H2K will be watching closely because Singh was saying it already that he wants Fnatic to win because H2K will then hold the highest number of championship points after Fnatic and go to World. If OG win, though, it's another story. It is a different story because then Origin will go in the first seed into uh, Worlds from Europe. H2K will have the number one seed for the regional qualify mean, qualifier, meaning they'd be one best of five away from a world spot, but it would not be guaranteed to them. Fnatic, in that point, would take the, uh, the second seed based on points. Mm. That does also mean that UOL is in there, of course, now in the, the, or will be in that scenario in the regional qualifier. How are you looking at your chances? Revenge. Revenge time. <laughs> well, we will see that is coming up later, of course. But everything from championship points to regional qualifier seeding will be all locked in tomorrow as Fnatic face Origin in the title match for the European LCS Summer Championship. And after we settle the score here in Stockholm, it's North America's turn as they go live from Madison Square Garden and Counter Logic Gaming goes up against TSM for the number one spot in the NALCS. Everywhere we go. <laughs>
TSN. TSN. Team Sweden mid. Team Sweden mid. I it's not Sweden, it's Danish. But you know, it's... <laughs> He's European, we'll claim him. We'll claim him, it's fine. In any case, amazing matchups today, of course, in NALCS as well. Tomorrow, two fantastic finals. Crazy stuff, and our coverage begins right here in Stockholm's Hovet. Hovet, did I... How? Hovet. Hovet. <laughs> Arena at 5 p.m. Central European time. That is 8 a.m. Pacific. But until then, it is time to sign off and get ready for the North American LCS clash between Team Liquid and Impulse, which begins later today. From all of us here in Stockholm, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Hey, hey. Shortly, Horror has come Stolen. in. Stolen! Oh, 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 oh. Unicorns of Love may be able to do something with this. He's going to be in a little bit of trouble. Ryu's got aggressive. He's he down! Oh, power of Evil! That's the Ari play to Fischio wanted. And that will sentence death to your well in game one. You can make him yeah, come, 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 Oh, they didn't TP, they didn't TP, they're not TP, they're not TP. Good, good job, good job, good job, good job, good job. Then we see the reset. Jan is looking for Varnak and he's no going to find him. That's going to be the quadra kill. Is he going to find the Penta? No, Power of Heels run away. There's a cleanse of the charge. Oh, it hits! This might be a Penta! Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, yeah. oh. In Sweden, Jan and Gunnar got the Penta kill. H2K, 2-0 up. The fight's breaking out. Then you know that. has arrived. It's two, it's three kills for H2K! I go for kill, I go for kill. Come, 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 come,